r slash no sleep posted by you slash the gecko wrangler nick and rick's pizza rules for delivering to the mock hide hello daryl we must say we're quite surprised at how your delivery to narissa went this is definitely the first time she hasn't attempted to stop one of our drivers from leaving but since the delivery went so swimmingly we'll be sending you back to broken hand bond once again this time to a more animalistic customer of ours truth be told this one has all the ferocity and charm of a saltwater crocodile with an appetite to match, though we're pretty sure feeding an actual crocodile would be less troublesome. But in any case, we've given you all the information you could possibly need regarding this customer. Read it thoroughly, and there should be nothing to worry about. Customer Name, The Mock Hide Address, 2924 Champlain Regular Order, Large Meat Lover's Pizza, Undercooked with Extra Thick Crust topped excessively with shredded mutton and raw pork scraps. Additionally, the whole pizza should be soaked heavily in cow blood. Residence Description, the northeastern corner of Broken Hand Pond shoreline. The mud on the shore here is riddled with deep marks of various shapes and sizes, several of them resemble deep drag marks, while others show clear signs of large creatures thrashing around in the mud. In any case, all the marks eventually fade right at the water's edge. Customer Description, the mock hide resembles an incredibly large, poorly preserved animal pelt. Its top side is covered in patches of shaggy brown hair, with several large bald spots exposing the weathered brown skin underneath. Overall, the pelt strongly resembles a massive old cowhide. That is, until you look under it, the lumpy underside of this pelt is covered with crowded rows of shiny black teeth. The teeth are so great in number they collectively resemble a blanket of writhing sea urchins, twitching subtly as their owner moves. The creature also possesses a grim array of pointy white dipped fangs at its center and the hide's outer edges are adorned with long, sharply hooked claws. On top of that, the pelt's edges additionally possess an alarming number of glazed, pupil-less, cloudy blue eyes, all of which are attached to long, retractable eye stalks. Rules for delivery One before leaving for the area, be certain to take two small bags of salt with you from our supply room. It's beyond important to have salt on hand when dealing with this particular customer. Two if you have any recent cuts or scrapes, be sure to rub them thoroughly in alcohol and citrus extract, then bandage them tightly before leaving the restaurant. Going to this delivery with the smell of blood on you is a big mistake, it happens to be this customer's favorite food. 3. Do not wear jewelry or shiny objects of any sort during this delivery, such things tend to provoke this customer quite easily. 4. Upon arriving at the Machide's dwelling, be sure to take one bag of salt with you, leaving the other one on the passenger seat. This is the best way to keep any and all possible happenings under control. 5. Once you're near the shoreline, take no more than two steps from off the grass onto the mud. Getting any closer than that to the mock hides hunting grounds is a serious mistake. 6. Once on the shore, open the pizza box and start fanning the lid towards the water, the resulting scent of pork and blood filling the air will grab the mock hides attention almost immediately. It will arrive soon thereafter. 7. While waiting, be very watchful of the pond's surface. Eventually, you'll notice one of the Machide's eye stalks subtly breach the water, looking around slowly. The creature regularly scouts for food this way, so this is how you'll know when it's nearby. 8. Once the eye stalk peeking above the surface notices you, slowly open the pizza box to get its attention. At this point, avoid making any sudden movements if possible for the remainder of this delivery, such movements provoke the Machide quite easily. 9. As long as the spying eye on the surface eventually sinks back under the water, all is well and the mock hide will soon drag itself ashore to collect its pizza. However, if more eye stalks start appearing alongside the first one instead, quickly get as far from the water's edge as possible, the mock hide is about to attack. Shortly, the massive beast will launch itself high out of the water in a frenzied attempt to land on you. 10. Assuming the mock hide didn't throw itself from the pond, it will instead start pulling itself ashore. Once it does, sprinkle the bag of salt heavily in a long line at your feet. The mock hide hates salt so this line should be more than enough to keep it from getting too close. 11. Be certain not to empty the bag entirely. Instead, after you've put down the salt line, keep the bag and all the salt left inside it tightly clenched in one hand. Don't let go of it until after you're back in the car. Worst comes to worst, that salt may be the only thing keeping you out of the pond. 12. Do not reach across the salt line in any way until after the Machide has taken the pizza and begun returning to the pond. The creature's dislike of salt is strong enough to keep it from reaching over the salt line, but its many eye stalks are surprisingly flexible, and remarkably strong, just one of them has enough power to drag you by your outstretched hand over that salt line and into the water, 
where it will promptly feast on your blood. 13 Once the mock hide is relatively close to the line, quickly open the pizza box entirely and face it towards the beast. After it's gotten a good look at the box's contents, the hide will start clicking and gurgling frantically. This signals that it's about to pay for the pizza. 14 The mock hide will drop a large black pearl into the sand as payment. Do not, however, attempt to collect the pearl yet. The beast could easily take this opportunity to drag you away. 15 As soon as the mock hide drops the pearl, gently toss the pizza over the salt line towards the creature. Once it's pulled the pie under itself and returned to the water's edge, quickly grab the pearl and get back into the car. 16 There's a good chance that, after it returns to the water, the mock hide will have dropped more pearls close to the pond's edge. Do not make any attempt to grab any of these additional pearls, they are a trap to get you closer to the shoreline. The mock hide won't hesitate to strike if you fall for it. Again, get back in the vehicle and leave immediately after collecting the first pearl. Rules for dealing with an attack. 1. If the mock hide ever manages to grab you, quickly throw the handful of salt on it, or shower it with whatever's left of the bag of salt if possible. The creature will screech in pain at this, flailing and shaking wildly as it does. It'll be too focused on its own pain to stop you from escaping. 2. As you run, try to keep the mock hide at least partially in your vision, and be prepared to dodge suddenly. As the creature's thrashing gets more chaotic, small parts of its body will actually break off and become high-speed projectiles. Be careful none of them hit you. The situation will escalate quickly if they do. For a few brief seconds, those pieces of hide are still alive as they fly through the air. 3. If the mock hide grabbed you, then at least a few of its black needles probably stung you. Unfortunately, they inject an unusual venom as they pierce the skin. It quickly causes extreme levels of pain, which often immobilizes the mock hide's prey due to sheer agony. But fortunately, it never lasts for longer than a few minutes, so ignore it the best you can until it goes away, or at least until you're back in the car with the doors locked. 4. Once you're back in the car and free enough from the pain to pay attention, quickly take note of any and all injuries you have. Act accordingly based on the injury, leaving wounds untreated in general can have terrible consequences, but this rule counts double for those inflicted by the mock hide. 5. Depending on the severity of the wounds, you may need to visit the emergency room at the nearby hospital. Should this happen, be sure you say nothing regarding the more unusual circumstances of your injuries. Best case scenario, they'll probably put you in a straitjacket for claiming a semi-aquatic cowskin tried to drink your blood. 6. If a piece of the mock hide managed to latch onto you earlier, it's important that you act quickly, the patch of skin will fuse with your own skin quickly, draining you of blood at an alarming rate. To remove it, quickly take the second bag of salt, and smother the patch of hide with its contents thoroughly. The fragment of hide will quickly detach from you as a result, briefly writhing in pain before dropping dead completely. 7. If you suddenly feel lightheaded, the mock hide unfortunately managed to start draining your blood. While this almost certainly won't kill you, it will make driving difficult. If it gets to the point you have difficulty focusing on the road, try to get as far from Cribble Rock Run as you can, then pull over and call emergency services. 8. If the mock hide's inner fangs manage to pierce you at any point, quickly drive to the ER. You'll be needing medical attention quickly. 9. Once at the ER, tell the medical personnel you were bitten by an adder or several of them, depending on how many marks there are. The anti-venin for adder bites works remarkably well on the mock hide's venom probably due to their similar effects and composition, and fortunately, the bite marks from the creature bear remarkable similarity to snake bites. The doctors will thus wholeheartedly believe you were just bitten by a simple snake. 10. Depending on how many of the mock hide's hooks latched onto you during the attack, you'll need the ER's attention with this as well. The deeper wounds will require several stitches. 11. When the medical personnel ask about these wounds, Tell them you were mauled by a large cat, thanks to another resident from Cribble Rock Run, such attacks have been common lately. Since the mock hide's claw marks are also surprisingly similar to wounds inflicted by a big cat, the doctors not only won't have any reason to question your statement, but will also know exactly how to treat the injuries. That should be everything you need to know about the mock hide. This thing is easily one of the pond's more animalistic inhabitants, and in all honest truth, we're surprised it even knows how to pay our drivers. But believe it or not, those pearls the creature pays with are surprisingly valuable, so we're willing to tolerate its bizarre nature for the most part. We even top this particular pizza excessively to keep the thing happy with us. Though, that said, this monster has caused us quite a bit of trouble these past few years, the worst incident so far was when it attacked an employee of ours named Andrew. While he was all around a great employee, Andrew was unfortunately a little forgetful we sadly didn't pick up on that until later. 
This forgetfulness led to more than a few complications when it came to the many rules and guidelines of a certain neighborhood, but somehow, Andrew managed to avoid any and all serious consequences on his deliveries. That is, until we sent him to the mock hide. On that delivery, when the thing pulled itself onto the shore, Andrew used all the salt in his bag to make the salt line, and thus didn't have any leftover to defend himself with. Worse yet, when that slithering hide dropped its shiny black pearl in front of him, Andrew foolishly reached for the shining treasure immediately. Unsurprisingly, the creature grabbed him by his outstretched hand immediately, and quickly attempted to sink its hooks into his arm. But somehow, as a terrified Andrew struggled to escape the ice stock's grasp, he managed to get the hungry beast so frenzied and riled up that it accidentally fell flat onto the line of salt. The resulting agonized flailing sent countless scraps of the Machide's body flying through the air, unfortunately, one of those scraps caught Andrew on the neck. This was the first time this had ever happened, so we tragically didn't notice send a second bag of salt with our drivers yet. So, despite his desperate attempts to rip it off, Andrew couldn't remove the piece of hide from his skin. He had no choice but to quickly drive back to the restaurant for help. Unfortunately, that took more time than the poor fool could afford. After Andrew initially got out of the neighborhood, the panicking delivery driver made a frantic phone call to us explaining the situation. But without warning, a high-pitched shriek interrupted Andrew's own half-screaming voice, and the call cut out completely. Understandably worried, a small swarm of our employees got in their cars and took off in his direction. About half an hour of desperate searching later, one of the searchers noticed a bright pair of lights shining out of the bushes, just off the side of the road and into the woods. Upon further inspection, the lights were discovered to be the tail lights of Andrew's car, with what was left of poor Andrew still stuck inside, most of his skin had been ripped and torn away and his remains were so thoroughly drained of blood that there wasn't even a stain where the corpse was sitting. And as our mortified employees looked around the gruesome scene, they discovered a small slick trail leading away from the area, after following it, they found the trail ended right in front of a large river. For a little while after that, numerous small animals were regularly found dead near that river, with every single one of them missing most of their skin and blood. Eventually, the small animals were slowly replaced by bigger animals, until those reports ceased almost entirely and were quickly replaced by a small number of missing persons cases. At the same time, multiple claims of a giant tan skin floating across the river began to appear in the news, though they eventually faded into obscurity as sightings diminished. But these reports and claims led us to a frightening conclusion, somehow, those pieces the Machide rips from itself out of agonizing pain don't die. Or at least, not as quickly as they should. They might only survive like this for a few seconds, but if those pieces can hook into a steady source of flesh and blood quickly enough, they can avoid dying altogether. They all feed on this new source, drinking its blood and stealing its skin, slowly growing until they eventually need to find more food. Then, they go out and hunt, slowly growing bigger with each prey they claim until one day, they've become another monster entirely. So now, we regularly double-check every car delivering to the mock hide for two bags of salt, as well as having an individual rule about it. That is because, for one thing, what happened to Andrew is nothing short of horrifying, and we wouldn't wish a death like that on anyone or anything. But on top of that, the mock hide is nothing short of a horrible, terrifying monstrosity, and a decent threat to everything around it. The fact that even one of them ever existed is bad enough, we do not want that number to rise more than it already has. Sincerely, Rick, and Nick Castillo